In this video, we're going to break down the cost of our van build. We're Jake and Heather, and we live in our self-converted Sprinter van, Lady Liberty. We sold our belongings and downsized our lives to live a life of freedom. A life on our terms, chasing adventure and discovering new places while living life on the road. Hey guys, we're Jake and Heather with Jake and Heather Go and Live Free. We live full-time here in our self-converted Sprinter van. We've been living on the road since last July and are currently camped up in Sedona, Arizona. We're going to break it down in categories such as solar and electric, appliances, exterior maintenance, and other things such as plumbing and shower. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do the kitchen. We're going to do it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, should we start off with what the van cost itself? Yeah. So um, we bought our van in, well, we found our van online and we bought it in person in Philadelphia. It cost us 16 grand and it had 147,000 miles on it when we purchased it. So the van itself is a 2008 Sprinter van. It's the 170 wheelbase extended, so it has that extra 18 inches on the back of it, and it's a 3500 mega roof model. Now, if you've never heard of the mega roof model, it's because they didn't make that many of them. To my understanding, uh, they were offered to the FedEx fleets as an option directly from the manufacturer, so it came with a fiber glue Fiber glue, a fiberglass <laughs> topper directly from Mercedes Benz, and that gives us about 12 inches of extra headroom inside the van. So, from our floor to ceiling after our build out, measures just a little over seven foot. So, it's really, um, really nice inside to have that extra space. So, that yeah, once like... I heard that mega roofs were an option, I was like, whoa, we need a mega roof. Girl needs her things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the mega roof has been key for us. The doors uh, weren't original for the van, so the doors were taken off an ambulance, which was good because they have all the windows, so we didn't have to purchase the windows. But anyways, the whole deal was a little sketchy, and we weren't exactly sure what type of condition it was in, uh, which came back to haunt us. And so we had to replace the engine about 10,000 miles after purchasing it. <laughs> and um, that cost was $3,500. Yes. So we ended up spending $3,500 on a new engine with how many miles? 92,000 miles. With 92,000 miles. Jake actually had a friend fly in to New Jersey and we replaced the engine in my parents' driveway. Shout out to mom and dad. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so that saved us a ton of money not having to pay a mechanic. So let's move on to exterior costs. Right? Okay, so we'll talk about the exterior. Our van, if you haven't noticed already, is tan. And we did that by raptor lining the entire exterior of the van but we didn't do that before uh, repairing some small rust spots. It had a couple of dents here and there. So mm -hmm. anyways, those costs came out to $980. Yeah, and we love the way it came out. We get a lot of compliments when we're on the road. People ask us all the time about our exterior. So it was a big win. Not only is it more rugged and protective, we just wanted to personalize the van a little bit and make it unique to us. So Jake ended up doing a few other upgrades to our exterior. Um, he worked on the suspension. Uh, what else did you do? So we did RV rated front and rear shocks. We did a heavy duty sway bar. We did six all terrain tires. Mm -hmm. Oh, we upgraded the torque converter and we added a light bar to the front. Yeah. So all of those cost us $2,136. Exact. <laughs> so as Jake mentioned, uh, our van already came with uh, the sliding door windows. So we only installed two additional exterior windows back behind our bed. And that those only cost us $240. Jake also had a relationship with a local tint shop in Florida. So we were able to tint all the windows on the van for free. Zero dollars. <laughs> all right, so let's jump into the second largest cost of the build which is our electrical system. Van life! Woo! So the core of our electrical system is 800 amp hours of lithium iron batteries. We only really budgeted around $4,000 for the batteries. We knew we wanted a lot of power. 
So after doing some more research, I realized that you could actually go direct to the supplier to purchase batteries that have the exact same specs and components as the Battleborns. And we were able to secure 800 amp hours of lithium shipped and delivered to our door for a cost of $4,500. Cheat code. So as far as solar goes, on top of the van, we have four 100 watt panels. And those cost us $411. To help charge the battery bank, we have a DC to DC charger as well. It's an MPPT combo that allows our van alternator to charge our batteries while we're driving, as well as convert the solar energy into 12 volt battery power. That unit cost us $299. Additionally, in order to run all of our household items, such as our espresso machine, our Vitamix blender, maybe my Dyson hair dryer. <laughs> All the things that make it feel like a home. Uh, yeah, all the things that make it feel like a home for us. We installed a Renergy 3000 watt inverter and that cost us $315. $15. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> all the wires, crimps, AC and DC fuse breakers, bus bars, and other miscellaneous things to get everything installed cost us an additional $315.50. Wow, almost mm. the same price as the inverter itself. Yeah. We decided to install a rooftop AC um, just in case we got stuck in warmer weather and Scout was in the van. We wanted to make sure that he was cool and comfortable and that ended up costing us $960. Yep, and that was kind of a decision um, that was kind of made around getting so many amp hours of batteries. We were able to run the AC for about two nights mm -hmm. on the batteries if we need to. but. Really, it's just to run it for a few hours at a time. So if we need to run out and we're not in the van or we need to run in and go food shopping, we can't bring Scout. We can leave him in the van without leaving the engine running, knowing that he is cool and safe. Mm -hmm. Since we're in the van, let's bring you over to the kitchen and we'll talk about, uh, should we call them appliances? They're definitely appliances. We'll talk about the appliances. <laughs> let's go to the kitchen. We purchased our fridge from Facebook Marketplace for $800, which is about $300 cheaper than it was brand new. And it had only been used once, so it was basically a no-brainer. We also purchased our Furion stove and oven range as a scratch and dent unit on eBay. So we got that for $350. Another deal. So we have a propane tankless water heater, which cost $207. We have a single Max Air fan, which was, I believe, just over $300. And we cannot forget about the trusty, cheap Chinese diesel heater, which we purchased for $130. I'll also add the propane locker build to it, uh, since it's kind of part of the appliances, and that cost us $175 for things like safety regulators, on and off switches, and to build the locker itself. Let's move on to the cost of our shower and bathroom. My feet are on the counter, my feet. <laughs> we have a 46 gallon freshwater tank and a 20 gallon gray water tank underneath the van. Those total cost us $151. And we went with a composting toilet by Seahead for our toilet of choice. I hope you're sitting down when we tell you these costs. It was $700. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if you've if you've done any research and you know, um, you will know that Nature's Head toilets cost over $1,000. So this one was a little bit cheaper and so far we have zero complaints and it's been a great toilet for us. Mm -hmm. Good to know people, good to know. <laughs> the total of all the plumbing and shower build cost, including the wood to build the walls and the tile was $526. Luckily, during our build, Nebia reached out to us and sent us their Nebia by Moen spa-like shower head, which we love, uh, but I believe it retails for $300. Yeah, so if you're planning on doing a shower in your van build, we highly, highly recommend spend the $300. We would totally buy this all over if we had to. It it's conserves water, which is huge when you live in a van. Yeah, like Navy showers in this. You turn it on, psh, completely soak, turn it off, soak up, turn it back on. I mean, I think you can use like less than a gallon of water if you take a quick baby shower. Yeah, um, we, we literally shower pretty much every day. All right, should we talk about the front of the van? Yeah. All right. For the front of the van, I designed this little bench seat that sits here in front of the shower. And then we also, Heather insisted that we get the seats reupholstered 
Um, we found someone local on Facebook Marketplace and they reupholstered these seats and then made these seat cushions for um, this bench seat that I designed and that total was $1,175. So we also decided to put um, swivels on our front seats so that they turned around like so and that was a total cost of $615. All right, so moving on to cost for the kitchen, the breakdown is $200 for the backsplash, $79 for the butcher block countertop, $190 in materials to build the cabinets and the framing of the entire kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then we have our faucet and sink, which totaled us $179. So that only leaves us with build materials and a category that we will call miscellaneous costs. For our build, we insulated the entire van using Havelock wool. That cost was $669. We also used two entire rolls of rattle trap sound deadener to sound deaden the van. And I believe that cost was $200. So the subfloor and life proof flooring that we installed cost us $234. All of the wood used in our build, including the shiplap, the wood for the, the wood for the ceiling, the cabinets, the bed support, paint, stain, nails, and any other little trim pieces we used, that cost was one thousand and seventy-three dollars. With some missing receipts and maybe some costs that we didn't quite um, write down and keep track of. We're just going to add a $500 miscellaneous cost. Yeah, I, I know there are some things, some quick trips to the hardware store that I didn't necessarily record, but I know they happen. So a safe estimate, just to be fair, I'd say it would be about 500 bucks. Yeah. All right, so do you want to tell them the final cost, the total cost of our build? Yeah, so the final total cost of our build all in was $37,818. Hopefully that gives you guys a good idea on potentially what you could spend if you wanted to build a van similar to ours. We know a lot of people think that you have to spend, you know, eighty to a hundred thousand dollars to yeah. build the van of your dreams. And I would say we accomplished building the van of our dreams for under forty thousand dollars. So yeah. So if we can build our van at that cost, so can you. We know a few people on the road. Uh, shout out to our friends Chase and Maria Jose who have a similar van build at a similar cost um, Well different layout. Yeah, so their, their layout is Completely different than ours, but yeah. totally fits their needs as does ours our van fits our needs But we'll leave them link their channel down below make sure to uh, Check their video out because they recently did a cost breakdown as well and as we were hanging out camping here in Sedona we had realized whoa we both spent the same amount of money nearly yeah. and have completely different builds, but they're very similar in a lot of ways. And we both sourced our some items um, very craftfully, I'll say, to save some money and really get the most uh, bang for your buck. So mm -hmm. Yeah, so check them out um, and do your research. Um, and, you know, if this is something that you guys want to do and you want to live on the road, don't think that you're incapable of making it happen because we made it happen um, with our budget and yeah. your budget may be less it may be more but the gist of this <laughs> little spiel here is to kind of say that take your budget and get creative and you can build an epic van and most likely will be the van of your dreams yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please hit the thumbs up button down below as well as the subscribe button so you can stay up to date. We'll be posting videos periodically throughout our adventures and hopefully providing some more information to you if you are looking to get into van life yourself. Yeah, stay so tuned. We'll see you in the next one.